Today we just have to have a, a teaching foundation so that we can have praying expression. Teaching foundation gives help to praying expression. When there is no teaching foundation, prayer is not properly expressed. So let's trust God for a teaching expression. The, the teaching, the, the teaching in terms of didache or doctrine that will give expression to the prayer in the spirit. Just guys, said, these words that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. Let me tell you something. When the prayer is not in spirits, the prayer goes nowhere because it is written, those who will worship the Father, that is to say, those who will serve the Father, they will serve Him, they will worship Him in spirit. Spirit. The world sets the agenda that is spiritual. And then that agenda is a life of prayer. A life that expresses itself in prayer. A life that expresses itself in utterance. So teaching, very important. So let's x-ray. Today I'm talking about x-raying. X-raying a spiritual orphan. The interest of this is at the end of this, you find out whether you are an orphan spiritually or not because when you are an orphan there is something that happens when you are an orphan if you are not an orphan there is also a condition a condition so an orphan is a condition one who is not an orphan is orphan is also a condition and by the way i'm not talking about a, a physical condition of orphan or i'm not talking about an orphan as a physical condition. I'm talking about orphan in this case as a spiritual condition. Shout hallelujah. Let's say a few things in the scripture to see God's attitude towards the half orphan. God's mindset, how God relates with the orphan. Let's talk about this scripturally and then using the physical orphan in order to move to the spiritual orphan. After this, I will take a scripture and we will try to understand what scripture calls often, especially in the New Testament. Psalms number 68, verses 5 and 6. Psalms 68, verses 5 and 6. God is a father of the fatherless. This is how God relates with the orphan. So, just take for granted at this point that the fatherless is the orphan we are talking about. So God is a father of the fatherless. Now you have to understand this is Old Testament. In the Old Testament, it was abominable or it is in the Old Testament time, it was abominable to consider God the father of an individual. God was seen as father only at a general level, like a nation. It is in the New Testament that just has introduced God as personal father. And that merited him death. Because by calling God father, it means you are begotten of God. You are God nature on earth. It means you are God. And just as was bold enough to say, I and my father, we are one. And they said, this cannot be so. That was the greatest crime of Jesus, among others. But when the scripture in the Old Testament calls God a father to the fatherless, it is not in a sense of begetting. It is in a sense of doing unto the fatherless what the father will have done or is expected to do. So father, in this case, is a matter of role, not a matter of begetting. Am I communicating? Praise God. Praise God. This is very important. So the word father here is role, responsibilities, not offspring experience, not the experience of begetting. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy habitation. So God in his holy habitation, what does he do? He does certain things among which are the responsibilities of fathering the fatherless ones.
God said, verse 6, God said the solitary in families. Pay attention to the word solitary. Solitary, solitude, solos, solo, just has to do with single. One who is single, who is alone. Who is left alone. So the solo, solitary, solitude. Some, some level of aloneness. So God brings, sets the one who is alone in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Let's go to another scripture, Psalms 146 verse 9. We are trying, since the, the, the vision this evening is to x-ray a spiritual offer. We start from what is known to what is unknown. We start from the physical to ascend into the spiritual. Shout hallelujah. So Psalms 146 verse 9. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves. He brings relief. He relieves the fatherless and widow. He brings relief. Imagine like what is going on in Gaza in Palestine different organizations different world organizations that have interest in bringing relief to poverty stricken hungry people they bring relief relief packages in war-torn countries, in places ravaged by famine. Relief means bringing resources to make life bearable for those who go through difficulty of a higher proportion. So God brings resources to make life easy for the fatherless. That's what this scripture is talking about. God makes resources available. When God brings, when we talk about resources from God, we are, we are not necessarily talking about yam and ex. We are, we are not necessarily talking about bags of rights. Like people in Nigeria in one week, they're talking about relief or palliative. That means Nigeria is in a war season. War of citizens against their leaders. And then these leaders say, let's make palliative English words available. But this was for one week. After that, we don't know. The palliative ended up in the hands of those who give palliative. And we move on. At least we have done something. News carried it. That's it. So when we're talking about this, this is not Nigerian government palliative to the nation that they have made poor. This is God bringing resources depending on the area of need. And as we begin to study, you will see what a spiritual orphan means and who is a spiritual orphan and the conditions that qualify one as a spiritual orphan. Shout hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 11. Leave your fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. And let your widows trust me. Now, Jeremiah was a prophet in a time of national crisis. The deportation. The crisis of carrying people away from Jerusalem. And God is speaking through Jeremiah. For those who have to be taken away and their children are left as fatherless, don't worry about them. For those who have to be taken away and their, their women will be left as widows and don't worry, I will take care of them. Because what has happened to you has been decreed because you people have been arrogant and stubborn. And these are the consequences. But I am the God who takes care of it too. I am still father in this process. Say, so leave 
your fatherless children, don't worry about them. I will preserve them alive. I will make what is required for them to be kept alive, I will make available. Hosea, this should be about the last in trying to look at an orphan from the physical human perspective before we ascend to the spiritual place. Hosea, chapter 14, verse 3. Shout hallelujah. Just for me to be sure that you are there and you are following. Hosea chapter 14 and verse 3. Assyria shall not save us. Assyria here refers to the reigning kingdom of the time, the strong kingdom of the time. At every point in time, there is a reigning kingdom. There is a kingdom everybody wants to align with. There's a kingdom people want to take help from and think that is where help will come from. The prophet is making a warning. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses. Let's talk about horses again. Horses are very, very serious animals. And horses are used for the royals. They are used for warfare and serious sports. They are animals of strength and speed. So what the scripture is talking about here is that whatever we trust for speed and for strength will not save us. So the scripture is talking about taking attention from whoever is the reigning king that you depend on. Whatever is the ruling and controlling force, whatever is the human factor and human dominion or spiritual dominion that is not God. That is Assyria. And then a horse, your physical ability, your bank account, people around you. Remember the Psalm in, in Psalm 60 and verse 11? The help of man, useless. So Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses. Nor will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are our gods. So this is the language of trust and dependence. That we shall no longer trust human kingdom or spiritual kingdoms outside God. We shall not worship our strength and our ability. We shall no longer say to the work of our hands. The work of our hands, the relationship we have made. The alliances we have made. The knowledge, the knowledge that we have acquired. The skill set we have amassed. We shall not say these are our God. In other words, we shall not trust. We shall not depend on anything. For in you, addressing God, for in you the fatherless finds mercy. And this, at this point, we are safe to make a transition because the fatherless here seem to be representative of everyone. Because the scripture is saying we, it starts with we. We here can be a church. We here can be a nation. We here can be a family. We in this family. We in this nation. We in this state. We shall no longer trust this and trust this. We your children. We your people shall not. Why? We know in you the fatherless. It means this is like making comparison and making a room a possibility for us to translate or to understand that the we here refers to we are fatherless without you. If you don't understand me, don't worry. That's not the issue. But there is a connection there. At this point, let me take you to John's gospel. But before I take you to John's gospel, I want you to rise to your, your feet and make a disclaimer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, my relationship is not my help. My family is not my help. My connection is not my help. My intellectual ability, not my help. My social skills, not my help. Nothing is my help. My help shall come from you, the maker of heaven and earth. Whatever I have been trusting as my help, at this point, Lord, I repent. My business is not my help. 
you are the help of my business my marriage is not my help you are the help of my marriage my prayer is not my help my prayerfulness is not my help my fasting is not my help you are the help of my fasting you are the help of my prayerfulness say my pastor is not my help my prophet is not my help my church is not my help you are the help of my pastor you are the help of my prophet you are the help of my church lord you are my help in ages past in this age and in ages to come lord you are my help the help of my helpers lord you are my help take some time and speak so i cannot die because a man says no to me i will not fail because somebody doesn't pick my call because somebody opposes me i'm not dying you are my help glory to god in the name of jesus christ let me hear you shout hallelujah say amen be seated for in you the fatherless finds mercy so let's try to explore spiritual fatherlessness which we can conveniently at this point refer to spiritual orphan john chapter 14 verse 15 to 18 you will pay attention so when the scripture says God is a father to the fatherless how does God father the fatherless and who are the fatherless who are the orphans the word orphan comes up only twice in the new testament in this scripture in this passage of John chapter 14 and in the letter the epistle of James just twice that the word orphan comes up. John chapter 14 verse 15 to 18. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. And the Father will give you another helper. Of course, I've done some work with you. I've walked, we have walked through this scripture together. And you know that if you go to King James Version, it's going to have a different word for helper try let's see and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter try niv and i will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever try new living translation and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. These are four versions and four words. Try good news Bible. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. So, good news agrees with New King James. Of course, you know the word, the Greek word that is translated into advocate, helper, comforter, a counselor this Greek word is parakletos parakletos I have made uh, we've done work on this parakletos a couple of times each time we teach on this scripture parakletos referring to para and kaleo para means by the side nearby close to by the side and then Kaleo means called. The one who called, who is called and having been called comes to the side of the one who calls. So that if the one who calls is helpless, the one that has been called comes to help. If the one who calls is without counsel, is confused in a, in a situation and needs a counsel, a sound counsel direction the one that is called comes to the side of the one who called and then provides counsel so he is called what counselor 
if the one who called was just helpless, helpless and needed help desperately, and he called the one that he knew can bring this help, when the person comes para, para, that comes by the sight of the one who called, what does he do? He brings help because what was needed was what? Help. And if the one that calls is in a law, a legal situation, in a court, has a legal issue and needs an advocate, somebody who can do some, some interceding. And of course, in another version, it's called the another intercessor. So the one who, because this one is in a legal situation, in a law court before a tribunal, before a legal panel, and does not know how to go about this, needs the service of an advocate, one with knowledge of law, knowledge of how to help somebody walk through the, 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 the difficult legal process of defending self and claiming one right. Then this person that has been called, because he's competent, that is why he's been called, and by coming to the site, he stands with and for and by the one who calls him. Since this one has a legal issue and needs an advocate, this one now stands and does the work of an advocate and speaks for his client. I've told you that the word that is used in John here is primarily a word in the Greek language of the time. The Greek language of the time, it was used to refer to experts in different fields. Those who had skill sets and abilities to help. So that when there was a war, in a war turn, in a war condition, maybe they, they defeated or vanquished the losing army will have issues of low morale low motivation, discouragement, and people no longer having the desire to defend or to fight, then they will call the paracletos, somebody with the ability to arouse a people, to arouse the desire to fight. He will come and motivate he will come to the army and start speaking. By the time it will be done, the army will rise and chant, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they will go and overcome. That was the word that the person that had to do that was called paracletos. First of all, he had to be. It's not somebody who walked around looking for those who are demoralized. It means there is a demoralizing condition and people will recognize like a lawyer does not move around. For many cases of me, like, I don't, I've never seen a lawyer who moves around asking family to family. Do you have any legal issue? You have a case in a court? I'm a lawyer. In case you have a case in a court, no, lawyers sit in their chambers and they are very honorable. The day you have trouble, you look for them. Doctors, they sit in their, in their places and, um, and the consulting rooms and the day you are sick, you go and meet them. So when you meet them, it means you have caught them. From the moment you call the doctor, you no longer give yourself prescription. A doctor takes over responsibility. The moment you call a lawyer, then the lawyer takes responsibility. That, so this, is, this word is a Greek word what, that was in a secular usage. You secularly had no, rest, no, had no connection with spirituality. But in talking about the Holy Spirit... In referring to the Holy Spirit, this word was chosen because of its, of its connection, of its relevance, and its, its fittingness into the understanding of the Holy Spirit, or the understanding about the Holy Spirit. So the scripture here, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, another helper. What is used, and he will give you another paracletos. We have talked about another. We are doing teaching today, so let's just lay. Another here means Jesus is letting them know, I have been your helper, and they knew it. So when Jesus said he will go, 
Peter said, God forbid, you cannot die. Why? You are the helper. You are the counselor. You are the advocate. When we have trouble, we stand behind you. You are the one. When they bring somebody for deliverance and we do all our gara gara and the demon does not go, once you come, we know everything is over and the devil will go. When a sick person is around and you are not there, we are helpless. But once you come in, we don't need to pray. We don't need to fast. That is why in the time of Jesus, the apostles were not fasting. The disciples were not fasting. Why? The helper was in their midst. When we fast, it means we are looking for help. But when help is in your midst, when the helper is helping you, what is the need of fasting? I don't know where I'm communicating. So Jesus is saying here, I am your helper. But don't worry because I will soon leave. When I leave, there will come another person that will do what? Will help you the same way that I help you. The day a demon needs to be cast out, don't worry. I will another helper will help you cast out that demon. The day a sick person needs to be healed, don't worry. Another helper will help you to heal the sin. Another helper will bring about counsel on the day. You know, every time the apostles were accused of something, Jesus will defend them. Jesus will be the one speaking. And each time Jesus will ask a question, nobody will answer. And every time they ask him a question, he will give an answer that nobody will talk again. He was perfect as a counselor, perfect as advocate. They say, why do your disciples eat without, without washing their hands? He played the advocates. Why do they eat during Sabbath? Do what is not permitted on Sabbath. Haven't you read that in the time so so and so was a high priest? How David and his men, that was an advocate. He was dealing with legal matters. When there was need for counsel, any situation that will come, he will give a perfect counsel. And everybody. So what Jesus was letting them know is that you will not miss me. What Jesus was saying is that when the spirit comes, you will not miss me. Because the spirit will do everything I used to do so that you are not fatherless. Now, now we are still going. We are still doing some teaching. You know, from tomorrow, we we'll use this understanding to do some work, even as you go home. Because this is not the main teaching. This is by the side in order to walk through. I just want you to understand the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of people talk about the Holy Ghost. Like some people do teaching. They say, you say, the Holy Ghost, you cannot say, come Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is already inside of you. You know, it's so wonderful. It's so true. But the person is so wrong because the person does not even understand. Because the very word used to refer to the Holy Ghost strikes at the court of calling. Because every normal helper does not help you until you ask for help. That is why the word paracletos was chosen. So that he is the helper who is ever present. In the day of trouble is there. But until you give him permission... What you do when you ask the lawyer, you are giving a lawyer permission. Sometimes the lawyer can go to work without taking any fee from you. It's just that by your asking, a doctor can treat you for free. And doctors do that, but you must ask. I don't know where I'm communicating. This asking is a protocol of recognition and honor. So a lot of people say, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. So it's wrong to say, come Holy Ghost. It's, it's, good. it's wrong to say, let fire, the fire fall. The fire, no, it's ignorance. It's ignorance and it is, it's not culpable ignorance. It's just ignorance of ignorance. Ignorance because there is no knowledge. The only problem that we can, we can talk about is that if you don't know, just give a room for correction. So the very fact of using the word paracletos, to refer to the Holy Ghost means it is imbued in that understanding that you have to call him to assist you. Because as every believer, let me, let, can, can I say something? As a believer, you are in your marital issue, you and your wife. You can choose to go on your own. The Holy Ghost is still with you, both of you, but he will permit you to mess it up. Because you have not asked him. Not asking means you don't honor him enough to know that you are under, not above. I don't know where I'm communicating. So you can be so filled with the Holy Ghost and you are a useless husband. 
a useless wife. Why? There is one who is a counselor who should give you counsel in every situation. There is one who is, who is a helper who can help you through every emotion. But you've not permitted him. You've not allowed him. You let him think you can do it on your own. So you cannot... So the, our sitting down here is just one thing. The protocol of honor. It's not as if you don't know what to do. It's just that what you know, what to do. The things you know to do in certain conditions will be what will make you die early. It is your knowledge. Anybody who wants to marry knows what to do. No. But why do we ask God to show us, to confirm to us whether this is the right person? Because you only know today. You may know about wedding. You don't know what happens after wedding. The one who knows tomorrow and next tomorrow and the next year and the next year until eternity and the implication of what you do today on your eternity is the one who knows the end from the beginning. He is the God amongst us. The God who lives on us right now is the Holy Ghost. He is the one who will help you to see in imperfect way that the person that you like is the problem you have in the future. So even though you like the person now, but the person is not your wife because the implication of this decision now upon your tomorrow will be the devastation that will make you leave God. But you know what? If you don't ask, if you don't show dependence. Now, for everyone who says the Holy Ghost is already within us, we don't need to ask him to come down. We don't have to ask. Those words are human language of saying come down because we, when we say come down, it's not as if he's hanging on a wall, I mean on a ceiling and then coming down. He's referring to the one that is above us to come to our level and lift us. These are human languages. These are because we are dealing with, with eternal experience and eternal indescribable experience and we don't know the language of God. We use our language to address God. I don't know where I'm communicating. So that's it. Now, I'm going to another point. Just can say, ask. For the one who asks, receive, knock. For the one who knocks, the door is open. Seek. For the one who seeks. So, did he say you ask? Only once. Say, give us this day. Our daily bread. That means dependence on God is a daily experience. Including depending on the Holy Ghost. You are baptized in the Holy Ghost in church. But when you go home, you can, and somebody anoints you, your clothes, the clothes that you dried, you were drying in, a, in, your, in the yard, in your, in your neighborhood, and somebody had messed it up, and you were just filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and seeing heavenly vision. Now you have to choose to allow the Holy Ghost to control your emotion. Otherwise, you set the place on fire. So it's a church. All of you that don't want me to walk in the Holy Ghost, let me just leave aside this issue of God. And I'm just coming from church. I know I spoke in tongues, but this is not a matter of speaking in tongues. Whoever did this, come out. Let us sort it out. It's a choice. And the point is the Holy Ghost has not disappeared. It's just that since you have not asked him to take over, to be in charge, he watches to see you fail. So when people say, once you are born again, you cannot go to hell. God doesn't escort you to hell. God has put everything in place for you not to go to hell. But should you choose to board the bus that goes to hell, God doesn't stop the bus because it's your church. So these are things that are so delicate and so urgent for us to understand how the Holy Ghost has to be called. So the whole issue of saying, we are marking Pentecost, we are waiting on the Lord, we are taking this out to talk about the Holy Ghost, to ask Him to revive us. And some people can just think, is, this, is it not stupid? We already have the Holy Ghost. We are already revived. We are, but just can say, say, give us this day our word. So on the day you are depressed, you ask, you say, ask. Ask. Be sick. If you are weak, sick. Because the human condition is different from the heavenly condition. Things are stable and perfect and eternal there. But here, fire has natural tendency to go down. That's why we go to bed. Do you know why we sleep in the night? The body is repairing itself. Every time we go to bed in the night, the body is doing maintenance. 
So the more stressed you are, after you've been so stressed for a long time, you go to bed, you lie down for a long time. Why? It takes a longer time for the maintenance of somebody who has been working and tired for a long time. And for somebody who has not been doing anything, sometimes you go to bed to sleep. You can't even sleep for long because you, you don't have any need for repair. For those of you who don't sleep in the night, <laughs> I'm sorry. So if you have not been doing anything, why should you rest? Why should you sleep? Sleep is for those who need repair. And if nothing was damaged during the day, go and walk in the night. <laughs> Sincerely. People just think, once it is night, I should sleep. You should sleep in the night because you were walking in the day. So the body needs to repair in the night. I don't know where I'm communicating. Dr. Edward should say better. I don't know. Dr. Edward, am I in order? So I think I have this one is elementary knowledge. I know this one. I don't need to go to America. Let's go to <laughs> talk about. Praise God. I say praise God. And this is why spiritually the same thing. Why, why do we take time to rest in the presence of God? To wait in the presence of the Lord for repair, for maintenance. Because we are filled with the Holy Ghost in church. We hear wonderful words, but we go to work it out. The scriptures say, work out your salvation in what? In fear and trembling. You go back to marriage. That marriage is work. You have to work and keep the emotion. In the process, you talk some little nonsense here. You're some little nonsense there. And your children annoy you here and annoy you there. And your friends is pushing boundary here and pushing boundary there. You go to the office, a boss is pushing all sorts of things, pulling you up and down and causing so causing the fire, not rising up, but you know, so a lot of things are going on, emotions and words and all of these things. And in the process, leakage is here and there, and it's maintenance here and there, and all of this. So when, when we sleep physically for maintenance, there is a spiritual sleep, not the sleep of, uh, of not praying. So the spiritual sleep actually that is permitted is the rest in his presence. Rest in the word of God that corrects you. Rest in the meditation that restores your mind. Rest in speaking in the Holy Ghost that regenerates your, regenerates your heart, your spirit self. Rest in the presence. Rest in fellowship. Every time you walk away from fellowship, there is the joy that is higher. I don't know what I'm talking to somebody. You see clearly, you hear clearly, you perceive more keenly, you are more cutting edge in your expression, in your articulation, in your approach and all of this is because you have just come out of a maintenance experience. That's why seasons like this Sunday is a place, is a day of the Lord, it's an obligation day that we come to share fellowship and, and wonderful thing. But a season like this becomes intentional repair. So I follow a little bit of what happens in the space when we talk about International Space Station and we're talking about people walking, walking, uh, what do you call it, walking in the space or whatever it is, I've forgotten a part of uh, space walking or whatever it is that somebody will come out of the international space station and get hung out there to fix one thing and maintain the other thing so people are living there sometimes some new people will go and old people will return what happens the place is maintaining itself recently a spaceship something that had been launched by america over 40 something years ago and into the deep space lost connection with NASA headquarters for some time but because of the inbuilt experience or mechanism for, for maintenance self-maintenance after some time it can reboot itself I think was it China that sent sent, a, 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 sent something to sent some, some, some stuff to the farthest parts of the moon the farthest the most difficult part of the moon that Americans had not landed there and I think it was a he, and it landed wrongly but after some time he was able to maintain itself and re, reposition itself to be able to get light and power itself and all of that these things are done in some of the in some of the devices we carry so maintenance is essential so there is a maintenance of the spirit there is a maintenance of the body the point is that maintenance of the body is automatic everybody knows about that one when it's time to sleep if you are driving you will sleep and you may die sleeping and driving but when it comes to spiritual that one it takes high intensity of 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 sensitivity 
to know when it means what when it is time to shut down. Sometimes you can be sitting down and watching television, but the spirit is nudging you. And if you are in the spirit, begin to speak in tongues before you know it. It's telling you it's time for maintenance. So when you lose touch with the Holy Ghost because you have not been refueling, you have not been connecting, and the sensors are down, and you can no longer recharge, that is when instead of obeying the Spirit and walking by the Spirit, as the scripture we talked about in Galatians, instead of being led by the Spirit, you begin to lead the Spirit, and in certain things emotionally, you go wrong. In, tension, uh, uh, in terms of decision, you go wrong. It is big you've not had enough maintenance the studying of the world the hearing of the world fellowship with others worship and his presence in the name of Jesus I speak today that you are maintained that leakages leakages things leakages damages whatever it is in your spirit that has been damaged by use your spiritual faculties uh, that have grown cold, uh, your spiritual faculties uh, that have grown uh, inept uh, and blunt uh, and powerless, uh, that you are restored uh, because we say, Give us help, uh, give us help against the foe, for the help of man is vain. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that God will send your help, help from above, uh, because until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, that there will be trouble in the family but when the spirit is poured upon us from on high the spirit will come to help us he will become the advocate he will become the comforter he will become the helper he will become the counselor I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit is poured from on high hallelujah be seated let's wrap this up so that we can find time to pray tomorrow. You know, teaching ministry for me is everything. Because we can pray wonderfully. But when we walk away from prayer, what is it that helps us to pray meaningfully later? It is the revelation that we have. Otherwise, prayer becomes empty exercise, bereft of strength and content. Just because says, if you love me, keep my command and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, another paracletus. It means the one you have to constantly depend on. The one you will constantly have to ask to help you. When you are in a difficult situation, say, I don't know how to handle this. When you are dealing with issues in relationships, say, I don't know how to go about this. Three, four, five people in front of you as a young woman and you like A and like B, but Z and D, you don't know what to to talk about and all of that you are confusing at that moment you know you will not go with your emotions because one year later your emotion may be useless you may not go with your perception because a week later your perception will change today what matters to you may be that somebody is very tall but on the day of issues of life it is not height that will make sense I don't know what I'm talking to you somebody will say but I love light skinned people at least I want you to understand it you mean when you when I don't like darkness and I'm told that I need somebody who has light skin but I want to tell you that is only for now that is perception that is how you see on the day of destiny you are colorblind it is no longer about light skin or dark skin it's about relevant skin I don't know what I'm talking to somebody so trouble does not understand what is light skin or what is dark skin so at this moment all you know is the texture of the body but you don't know what texture of the body is required Required to stand through difficulty and adversity who will stand by you on the day of trouble is neither short nor tall is the right person I don't know when I'm talking to somebody who will stand by you on the day of issue is not dark or white or black it is the person of destiny I pray in the name of Jesus that you will understand that the helper is the greatest need I will not leave you orphans I will send you another help. Okay. Sorry. I don't know how to talk without referring to marriage and relationship and all of that. Because that is what trouble most people. Some people, that's all they think about. But that is okay because it's very important. Just so when you take the decision, you know that when all is said and done, heights is just heights for heights. Weight is just weight for weight. Color is just color for color. 
there is a day of destiny. All you need is who will be available to hold my hand when all I just need is companionship. That one is no longer a matter of height <laughs> or complexion. It's no longer a matter of size or tongue or dialect. It's who fits into me, who takes me as I am, who loves me for me, who will be there when me, I have changed and things are no longer the same. Who will still be there when everything is no longer the same and the only thing that is the same is that I need somebody to love me and to stand by me. I will send you another helper who will help you in such decisions because you don't know what tomorrow will look like in the equation of life. But this helper knows and he will be able to notch you with the elbow. Say, stay here. <laughs> stay here. Glory to God. Some people get, they get three jobs opportunity. Ah, which one do I choose? This one is very big. But this one gives me a better pay. But this one is a new company. And the Holy Ghost knows the one that is big will soon go bankrupt. And the one that pays you will, dist will, distress, will stress you and destroy you. But the one that is just new will grow you. The Holy Spirit may not you. Go with something new. And you say, what? You don't even know whether they will succeed. But if you eventually sit there, you discover the other big one that made so much sense collapse and was acquired, taken over by another. And all old staff, they suffered. And the one that raised the pay and the pay is so high. There's a culture of slavery. They give you so much money, but you don't have life. You don't have hope. You don't have future. Everyone is depressed and distressed. They all have high blood pressure. They don't enjoy their money. But this one, 10 years later, you call the shot as the one on top. Because he grew you and gave you a future. It takes the Holy Ghost to give you a knot. Lift up your two hands and say, I need that other helper. I need that other helper. Isn't, isn't the Holy Ghost the helper of destiny? Glory to God. I hear the sound of rain. <laughs> Falling up he today we continue with the teaching tomorrow. I hear the sound of rain. Alabasha tata is pouring out. Alamasika talabra. He today. Halamason the braka talabushata. I hear the sound of rain. Hear the sound of rain. Alabate is pouring out. Halaboshi anata. He today. Mandeleboshi and Mandelebo. I hear the sound of rain. It is pouring out. It is pouring out. Raise your hand and raise your voice. It's boring on the church. 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 It's boring on home. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Hear the sound. Hear the sound. Hear today. I 
the fire. I need the pouring out of the Holy Ghost. I need the fire. I'm a motion. 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 I'm a
Say, revive me, Lord. Revive this house. Revive this house. Revive this house. Revive this house. Somebody you know you can pray with. Join your hand and begin to speak in the whole of it. Let there be a quickening, a quickening move of the spirit. Lord, we ask that your fire will fall. And let it fall in this house. Let it fall on the ministers. Let the fire fall on ministries. We need maintenance. We need maintenance. We need a maintenance of spiritual emotion. We need a maintenance of spiritual or trans spiritual or trans spiritual sight and spiritual vision. We need to be able to see clearly, hear clearly. We need maintenance of spiritual financial capacity, spiritual financial capacity, the facility to make wealth. We need perception in the economic place, perception in governmental places. La moshebra and la brasso de libra lato. La maso do to me and la brasso pelianda. Mala brasso to pra. La maso pre catalan. Mala bosha ta la brasia no to metia. Say give me grace against the. Give me help against the enemy. For the help of man is. For the help of man is useless. Mala bosha la bra. Mala brasso pra la cata. Maso pre cata. Malia and Lotto Messo, Mad Lotto Mandi, Cato Messo, Precatoli, Liato Preli and that Sopreleta, Salabrasso Notoli, and that Temango, Lamasi and Lotto Mea, Lianda Tomeso Mendo Precataya, Malabrasso. You will see clearly, you will hear clearly, you will know the vision, you will see it as God sees, you will hear as God hears, you will do what God does. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I will send you another helper. The other helper. Let the another helper come into the house. Let another helper come into your life. Let another helper come into my life. 
another helper, the other helper, the helper like Jesus. You get to cry. I need a helper like Jesus. 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 Say, I will not break down. I will not break down. I am helper, the helper. 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 I am helper, the helper, Lord. I am helper, the helper, Lord. I love all she and that's a brilliant. Let your fire, yeah, pour. Come, Holy Spirit, let your fire, Halabosha. We need your grace, Lord. Come. Holy Spirit, let your fire calabosha. Calabosha. Holy Ghost, we need you in this house. 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 Let your fire go. Just lift up those two hands and just wave. Holy Ghost, feel my heart. Just wave. Take over this heart. Holy Ghost, bring Jesus alive in every heart. Say, Holy Ghost, make Jesus alive. Bring Jesus alive. Bring Jesus alive. Renew the presence of Jesus. Renew the glory of Jesus in my life. Renew the vessel. Renew this vessel. Renew the glory of Jesus in this vessel. Refresh. Break the yokes. Depression go. Depression foul is go. Lost go. Canal things leave over. Fear go. Depression go. You are helped against the foe. You are helped against the mighty one. Whatever has been greater than you, you are greater. No, you are helped. You are helped. You are helped. Receive help. Receive help. Receive help. Receive help. Receive help. You cannot go down. Receive help. Receive help. Receive help. You cannot go down. Receive help. Receive help. Receive help. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. 